Hey team, it's Daniel again with Brazos Valley Boars and Varmints. So today we're going to be doing a comparison video, not trying to say that one of them is the outright winner over the other, but which would make more sense for you to get for your needs. And we're going to be talking about the Pulsar Helion 2 XP50 Pro or the iRay Zoom ZH both the 38 or the 50, this is the 38 in my hands here. I own both of these. These are both great. I love both of these. Um, and so let's go through this. The first thing I want to do is talk about what's identical in both of these. Let's just get that out of the way. Then I'm going to go through the specs that are differences, but really are kind of minor differences. Let's talk through those as well. And then we'll get to the major differences. I'm going to also bring up the things that are different with your user experience for both of them that don't really get reflected on paper and then let's talk about which one makes sense for you over the other one or vice versa that way you can make a more informed decision to best suit your needs without second guessing that decision now guys during this i'm going to overlay some footage that i took at the same time i'm going to try to sync these together as well as possible what i did was i took several thermal scanners as you can see here put it on a rail so that way i could mount all four of these on a tripod looking at the exact same thing and then as you can tell these two are on there and there's probably more videos like this coming in the future very soon but Today, we're just focusing on these two. Again, I'm going to try to give y'all as best of a comparison side by side as I can. Now, guys, it is impossible to do a 100% absolute fair comparison between these two because not everything is identical. Um, there are times in the footage that you will see that the Pulsar has got a smaller lens on it. So that way I can give you a closer to base magnification that the zoom starts off with and a similar field of view. However, at the same time, that's not what you're really looking at through an XP50. But if I just give you the higher magnification of the XP50, then you're not going to get the exact same field of view. You're not going to get the same zoom. See, there's, there's differences here. So this isn't a fair 100% comparison to comparison, but those are the exact points that need to be brought up when somebody is trying to think about which one of these is going to make more sense for them. So guys, let's just jump in. The identical specs are that these are 640 resolution scanners. These have 50 frame rehertz fresh rate. These both record both audio and video. They both have manual focus and they both have a removable rechargeable battery. Now, when we go to the smaller details, the, like for example, the Micron, the zooms have a 12 micron measurement. The Helion has a 17 micron measurement. So that there is a difference. The lower number on Micron is better. However, at the same time, we're, we're starting to, to really nitpick some small things here that are way less of a major concern by comparison to what's going to be coming up later. And this is going to be similar for the millikelvin readings, the sensitivity that you get. The zooms have a sub 50 millikelvin rating, but the helion has a sub 25. I would actually say that one's a little bit more important than micron, but one went one way, one went the other. Zooms have lower micron, Pulsar has lower millikelvin rating. So there, there are some differences here, but again, th th this is kind of getting real nitpicky, but I do want to lay these out. Um, the Zoom 38 has a detection range of 2,000 yards. The Zoom 50 has a detection range of 2,400 yards. And the Helion is 2,000. So those are real similar. The weights are all pretty similar. The Pulsar is lighter at 17.6 ounces. But the heavier of the Zooms is going to be the 50, which is 22.9. So about 5 ounces different. But at the same time, we are only talking about ounces. As far as battery life, the Zooms are claiming a runtime of 10 hours. The Pulsar claims 8 hours. There, So there is a little bit of a difference there. However, at the same time, really, if I can get more than 6 hours out of something, that is usually going to last my hunt, especially if I'm going to be changing locations and I put it on standby. Um, so 8 hours is more than enough on one battery. However, at the same time, if, if you do need a spare battery, spares for either model is about 100 bucks. 
thermal scanners nowadays have kind of fallen into two categories. As far as size, the categories would either be something that is the size of a laser rangefinder or something that is about the size of a scope, but a little bit smaller. Um, so obviously these are the bigger sizes, the ones that are a little bit smaller than an, than an actual scope. But overall with the size, I don't see how that's going to be something that's going to really affect somebody's decision one way or the other to get one or the other other things are going to be way more important than that. With warranties, IRA has hands down the best warranty in the market because not only are they a five-year warranty, but they have a five-day turnaround time on that. There's nobody else that beats that. Um, Pulsar has a three-year warranty, so there is the difference of three to five years, but which is going to lean more towards infrared. But guys, again, I've never had a problem with Pulsar customer service. They've been wonderful as well. But still, on paper, infrared is better. Now, let's move over to the major differences. So the big ones are going to be the basically the price and the magnification levels. So price is always going to be the one of the number one things that I talk to somebody about when they're wanting to get into the thermal game or buy something to, to add to their thermal game. Both the Zoom 38 and the Pulsar are $4,000. The Zoom 50 is $4,500. So if the budget is a big deal to you, then I get it that $500 makes a big difference. However, at the same time, some people feel like if I'm spending $4,000, what difference does it make to add on another $500? But I also realize that's a slippery slope where every $500 you can get something way better. And next thing you know, you completely blew your budget out of water. It got out of hand. So that there are your, your differences there. Um, it's That one's going to be purely up to you and what you can afford. Magnification is the next major difference, really the only one that we have left. And again, this is the big love of the zoom is that you get optical zoom. So with the 38, you start off with a 1.5 base magnification that then can be optically zoomed up by changing the focal length of the lens inside of it all the way up to a three power base magnification, still maintaining that 640 resolution. The zoom starts off at 2.0 and then goes up to 4. And again, this is all without digitally magnifying anything. That is, again, I can't speak the praises to how amazing and excited I am about that. If this can get put into scopes, this is going to be a real industry changer for the thermal world. I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes. The Pulsar is kind of a one-trick pony because you get two and a half base power mag magnification and that's what you get. Next is going to be the things that I notice as a end user having this experience that doesn't really show up on paper with the IRA. The biggest one being, like I talked about in my review video of it, that you get this fisheye view of the back lens. And so if you keep your eye right in line with the thing exactly that you want to look at and put that in the center then this looks fine, right? It's not a big deal. It's, it's okay. But the things that are on the edges, again, have that GoPro fish eye distorted view. It's one of those things that every time I pick it up and I look through it, I'm like, ah, yeah, it does that thing. But after that, I can get real used to it real fast. And it's really not that big of a deal. With the Pulsar, you don't have that issue at all. You've got a nice flat screen. Everything is in focus. There's no problem with that distortion effect at all. With the iRay, if you watch the review video again, you, you heard me talk about how the zoom has a very narrow field of depth. And that's going to be that the amount of range for what is in focus is a given amount, and this one is pretty narrow by comparison to the Pulsar, which has a very wide field of view. So once you get something in focus, everything that's going to be a good distance beyond or good distance nearer than that is all going to be in focus. With the iRay, it's pretty much going to be that what you've got in focus, you've got that plus just a little bit in front, a little bit behind. If it moves around a whole lot, it's going to get out of focus and you got to play with that. I know I spent a lot of time just speaking about that, but again, that is a thing. So guys, which one of these is going to make more sense for you? Well, again, this is going to have to be your decision. You're going to have to decide what features you do or don't like about these. Now, also with the Pulsar, I'm just going to have to come out and say it. The imaging is better. It has a cleaner 
crisper image. I get much more detail out of it. I know that the iRay has a smaller micron measurement, but the Pulsar has half of the millikelvin reading. So that's that sensitivity that you get out of it. And that's kind of a, a, a big deal here. And I don't know if that's why, or if it's the fact that the iRay has to change the focal length and being that this has to be mobile rather than being fixed, that makes a difference in how clear you can get this. Now, don't get me wrong. The iRay is wonderfully clear, but when you pick up the iRay versus you pick up the Pulsar, in these thermal monoculars, the Pulsar is definitely giving you a clearer image. I like the imaging on this one a lot better. But again, at the same time, you take one of these out in the field and you've got a changing landscape. You know, you get on a power line, then you can see real far distance. And then you go, get out of that power line back into the trees where you can only see short distance. The Pulsar is a one-trick pony. The iRay does all of that landscape work for you. So you can see near and get distance all while staying at that 640 resolution but the Pulsar, you're stuck with what you got, and that's it. So you really got to ask yourself, since the prices are similar, and the resolutions are similar, the size is similar, enough things about these are close enough to, for us to do a comparison. Which one is really going to matter most to me? Am I going to want to be able to pick this up with the Pulsar and have better clarity and I don't have to play with the focus much at all to see what I want to see? Or am I going to want to be able to have the versatility to operate well in near distance settings, far distance settings, even though I do have to play with the focus a little bit more? So that's going to be the, the ultimate decider for you. Um, I love... Again, I own both of these. I paid for both of them with my own money. These are great. I love both of them. And even though they are so similar on paper, there are differences about why one is nice to have over the other. And that's going to be something that you're just going to have to decide which one you want to put in your bag. Again, pick it up, turn it on, and it looks great, but you're stuck with this one magnification. Or pick it up, turn it on. You have to play with the settings a little bit more but that's also how you get the versatility that's built into it. It's up to you. Both of these are wonderful. I recommend either one of these to different people. Some some guys, they have Pulsar gear and they just want to stick with Pulsar because that's what they know. It makes sense. Other guys do the exact same thing with iRay. And man, if that's you, that may be enough for you to say, this is what I'm used to. Um, if you've got one of the Mark series iRay scopes, then this uses the exact same batteries. So now your batteries are interchangeable versus the Pulsar. You're going to have to use those trails, which are probably going to be discontinued in the near, very near future. I don't really think you can make a wrong decision. It's just which one is more right. I love both of these. These are both great. I hope this was helpful. But guys, no matter which one of these makes more sense for you, it's always hog season. Love y'all. Take care. Bye.